Martin Gwawowski, you're a research fellow and we're here in Perth at Curtin University in the International Centre for Radio Astronomy Research. Thanks for joining us on Australia in Space TV. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Now you've just discovered what is being called the 49ers. You've discovered 49 new galaxies uh, and I don't know where but somewhere in the universe obviously. Um, and you use the Meerkat uh, facility in South Africa. And pre-interview, you've, you've worked uh, in South Africa at this facility before as well. So as an astronomer, I think it's best for me to hand over to you and maybe explain the research. You've got a team uh, behind you as well, and you've obviously got years of research uh, experience. So it's really hard for me to where, where we start, but maybe to explain the 49ers. Uh, these are gas-formed galaxies. Uh, yeah, how did you find them? Yes, we were using the Meerkat radio telescope in South Africa, as you mentioned, and we were, we were using this telescope for three hours in total, less looking at the part of the sky. We were trying to find the star-forming gas within this one particular galaxy. We were trying to understand how the gas is interacting with the galaxy, and we didn't detect it, which is fine, this happens in astronomy, but when we were exploring the data sets, what we found was 49 new detections of the gas in other galaxies instead. So you, okay, so you're looking for a particular gas, uh, and then you just pointed it at one particular galaxy. Yes. But then in, you didn't find that galaxy, or the gas in that galaxy, but you found it in 49 others. Um, maybe it comes back to the three hours. Is that just a three hour allocation that you had Meerkat for? Yes. Yeah, that was pretty limiting. Yeah, so it was sufficient for the science case so to get a reasonable limit on how much gas might be in this galaxy that we were targeting. But this is fairly short in terms of radio astronomy observations. There's one science uh, survey with the Meerkat telescope, for example. It will use it for over 3,000 hours looking at one patch of the sky. Yeah. That'll be the most sensitive survey of its kind. It's called LADUMA. And that was part of the work I was doing mostly in South Africa in my previous postdoc. This was a side project looking at uh, one galaxy that was of interest for my PhD studies. But when I'm looking outside the data, I found it's 49 other galaxies. Nice. What type of gas are you looking for? Hydrogen gas. Just hydrogen, okay. Uh, what, what type of indicators does hydrogen have? So just hydrogen here, neutral hydrogen gas. This is, uh, we're looking for either warm or cold neutral gas, and this is from where molecular gas will form afterwards, and then from there, stars. So this is a very important component in understanding how galaxies evolve, how you get from the gas to stars being formed. When the stars die, they give off the gas, which is very hot. This then cools down into the hydrogen gas, and that's the life cycle of stars. So does it indicate how old these universes are? Oh, sorry, these galaxies are? Yes, you can get an indication, but generally we're just trying to find how much gas is in galaxies and how it's moving around within the galaxy. So in that context, and I'm certainly not an astronomer, but what does, what does it tell you about both the fact that you didn't find gas in the galaxy you were looking for, uh, but you found hydrogen in these other, other galaxies? So in the first case, we were confirming what was a tentative detection with an earlier telescope. We weren't sure if it was real or not, so we wanted to use Meerkat. Meerkat is a brand new Pathfinder telescope for the Square Kilometre Array, the SKA. This is currently Got under it. construction in both South Africa and Australia. So Meerkat is the, very, uh, it is the most sensitive of its kind at its frequency, so it is the best telescope for doing this follow-up study to find things that you're not sure about. So to clarify, Meerkat is part of the SKA? It is a pathfinder or a precursor of the SKA, but it, it will be subsumed by the SKA when it's in full construction. So you anticipate, because we walked past there, some SKA uh, sort of signage here uh, at the centre. Is this all going to be part of the, the broader SKA research that you're doing, as, as you say, a precursor? Yes, it will be. And what do you anticipate to be finding? Just more galaxies? You can research these galaxies a bit more and, and look for other types of gases. What are your expectations moving forward? And when you find sort of 49 galaxies by, by chance uh, or by mistake in, in some context, what does this kind of hold for you uh, looking forward in terms of your research? So firstly, it shows how fantastic Meerkat is already that in a few hours, even when you're not aiming to yeah. say, look at this part of the sky that we believe will be a lot of galaxies that have gas, it can already find a large amount. And in follow-up uh, work that we've done since then, we've also been finding even more galaxies in other Meerkat points. So, as I mentioned, Meerkat is a precursor or pathfinder for the SKA. So imagine how fantastic the SKA will be when it's in full operation within a decade's time. How many galaxies it can find and all the other science cases it will do too. Were you looking at a particular point 
uh, in the sky. Uh, what what made you sort of point in that direction in the first place? The target galaxy was the only reason why. So if you pointed at a random point in the sky, you wouldn't expect to find 49 gas-rich galaxies in right. that single pointing. So we got some luck there as well, but it shows how fantastic Meerkat is to actually reveal this amount of galaxies. One thing I'm always interested in is the process of using facilities like Meerkat. You're obviously involved with, as a partner uh, with uh, ICRA uh, as part of uh, the SKA. What time, what, how easy is it to get access for three hours to a facility like Meerkat? It's not that easy. Um, you can apply as part of a group or even by yourself to uh, conduct your own observations with Meerkat. This is called open time. And so every year they do a call and you submit your application, you explain why your science is interesting. And then the committee will go over all the proposals and award some of them the time. Sometimes you get the full time and you ask for, maybe they'll give you only some of it. But this is quite competitive. The oversubscription rate in that case was more than three to one. So well, like a third of the, the proposals actually got awarded at the time. And the team behind a discovery like this, uh, I take it there's more research papers to be produced uh, out of that or is, or is the work had been done? So the work has, I had a few other co-authors. Uh, I'll highlight one of them. The second author was Leia Obau. She was an ICRA summer student. So she got to work with us for a 10 week project uh, two summers ago as part of ICRA, learning how to do radio astronomy. And she helped us uh, do follow up um, analysis of the galaxies, calculating how many stars were in them. And for the largest ones doing modeling, seeing how much dark matter might also be in them, thanks to the neutral hydrogen gas detections were made of meerkat. What's your background? How did you get involved in astronomy? It's, a, it's an amazing uh, sort of aspect of science uh, in, in the space sector that we cover. But again, I, the more I talk to astronomers and the like, the more I learn. But it's also the, the focus that you ten, tend to have as researchers. How did you get involved in astronomy and where did it all start for you? I've always had an interest as a kid in space. And then when I was doing my undergraduate at the University of Sydney, in my third year project, I had the opportunity to do a small research project with some astronomers. That went well. So then in my honours year, I continued and did another project and then did a PhD. That was with ASCAP, the Australian SKA Pathfinder Telescope, so the other component of the main Pathfinder that is related to the SKA, and this one is based in Western Australia. And what was your PhD on? So also hydrogen gas, uh, looking in absorption, so looking for dips in spectra rather than emission, like in these 49 detections. And the pattern of these 49, anything, because you, in the research paper that I read, uh, some galaxies are taking gas from other galaxies and the like. What, what What's special about these 49ers and the way that they're interacting with each other? Yeah, so in that particular case, we see three galaxies that, if you looked at the optical, light, they look fairly separated. But with the power of meerkats, we can see they're all connected in their gas. And with the follow-up work that Leia did, we found that the middle galaxy was stripping away the gas from the others, and it had a really high star formation rate. So it was using this fuel that will form stars, by taking it away from the two companions and increasing its own star formation. So this gives us a better picture of how galaxies evolve, how they can go into a series of starburst events, that they will be forming a huge bunch of stars, and some also will start losing the gas and become dead so-called galaxies. Would you anticipate this is a common phenomenon that you see in the galaxy, that uh, the way that these galaxies are, you don't, I, I haven't heard more about sort of much about galaxies interacting with each other. I understand sort of the Milky Way as we come to the end of our own galaxy, we'll start to sort of clash uh, with our sort of sister gal galaxy next to us. The, the fact that galaxies are coming together and sort of crashing and, and stealing each other's gas, so to speak, how common do you anticipate that, that to be in, in the universe? Are we seeing it more and more? Yes, we are, we are seeing it quite often. In fact, we see it with our own Milky Way. There's two small galaxies of surrounding us that we also see the stripping ga uh, effect. The issue is that in astronomy, we're taking snapshots of the past. We yeah. can't see these happen. These things in happen over the scale of <laughs> yeah. millions of hundreds of millions of years to billions of years. So we need to increase our statistics to better understand how this process goes. So by seeing a huge amount of galaxies seen in a short amount of time with Meerkat, this is very promising that we can build towards a large statistical sample to do these studies. I think I've asked a question earlier. Do you understand how old these galaxies are? You talked about we're basically looking back in time yes. uh, to when this occurred. 
any idea of, of when this is occur or has occurred? So there's a range of distances that we're seeing these snapshots of the gas in these galaxies. The furthest away is about a billion light years away. So a billion years ago. Yes, that okay. we're seeing. That takes the light to travel from that galaxy yes. to, into our telescope and our eyes. Great. What uh, What's your next research project? Where are you pointing next to? I have a range of uh, research projects. So we're con in terms of this research project, we are looking at other da data sets of Meerkat because if we looked in one random one and found 49 galaxies, you're bound to find more galaxies looking at others. And we are finding that case, not as many as 49. This is a very high number, but we are finding 20 roughly per right. other data sets. So that was part of another Ikra Summer student project that happened this summer with Jasmine White. Besides that, I'm also using the ASCAP telescope searching for a phenomena called fast radio bursts. So these are extremely fast things that happen in, within milliseconds, within a blink of an eye, and they're really intense bursts of radio energy, many like intensely. If you stood on Jupiter with a bag of popcorn <laughs> and the uh, FRB came from the sun, you'd have nice. them cooked straight away. Okay. But we don't know how they're created. So we're trying to figure that out by detecting more and looking at the environments of those uh, fast radio bursts using ASCAP. And I think, again, your background of looking for hydrogen, is that something you would anticipate to keep doing? You know how to do it, you know what the signals are, uh, and you just keep uh, along that line? Yes, so I'm involved of larger surveys, for example, the Wallaby survey with ASCAP, which is preparing to survey the whole southern sky with ASCAP to look for neutral hydrogen gas. And as I mentioned earlier, the Luduma survey with Meerkat, which is looking at one patch of sky, but very deep, so really far away gas. And we can compare these two different distributions, shallow but wide survey, deep and narrow, to better understand how galaxies evolve as a history of our universe. Look, it's, it's fascinating, slightly outside my realm of expertise, but I suppose as a takeaway, what's a good call to action for potential uh, you know, young students uh, or the audience looking? What, uh, I did have another question before I even close, is how are you how are you naming these universes uh, and are they are they identifiable can where can people find out more about them so these particular galaxies um they have standard names they don't have other names i've given them the informal nickname of the 49ers yes because we found 49 of them this is a uh, reference to the 1849 gold rush in california so sort of comparing these galaxies to gold nuggets in the sky there's a paper that has been published uh, in the monthly notices Royal Society a journal, so people can find out more about that uh, finding there. And all, each of the galaxies has beautiful pictures for each one within that paper. Beautiful. I did. We'll have the link in the show notes for, sh for sure. Uh, but Mitch, and thank you so much for hosting us here today. It's a pleasure to visit here in Perth at the International Centre for Radio Astronomy Research. Thank you very much for hosting us. Uh, and thanks for joining us on Australia in Space TV. Thank you once again. Thank you.